Hello students, in this video we'll construct a confidence interval for the mean of a sample that's unknown, assuming that the variance is also unknown. So let's be given a collection, a sample, x1, xn, of a normal distribution. with unknown mean mu x and unknown variance. In previous examples, we've been dealing with a case of known variance, but now we have an unknown variance. So with unknown variance, we can use a sample variance, right? So we can consider the sample variance s uh, S squared is 1 over n minus 1, the sum, n goes from 1 up to, um, let's say I'm using n as my index over here, so I should probably change this over here to an m, right? m, m, well, it's 1 to n, of x, m minus x bar quantity squared. Remember, that's a chi-squared distribution with n, mi n, minus, n minus 1 degrees of freedom, so that should be an n over here, actually, so that's an n still. My index is just m, so that's going to be an n minus 1, so that's n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, all right, and so now, if I consider the test statistic, the statistic x bar minus mu x over s square root of n over here has a t distribution. So this has a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom, okay? And recall that t has a t distribution with new degrees of freedom if its PDF has the form. So what do t-distributions, what's the, what's the probability density function of a t-distribution? Looks like this. Looks like gamma of nu plus one over the square root of pi nu. Gamma, and that should be a nu over two actually, so I have to put a nu over two over here. Let's erase that. Looks like this. Looks like gamma of nu over 2, because I have to have fractional powers over square root of pi nu, gamma of nu over 2, and then 1 plus x squared over nu, raised to the power of negative nu plus 1 over 2. Now, the key feature of these things, of these t distributions, is that they, in some sense, look like bell curves. They look like this in shape. They're symmetric, of course, because it's an even function. So if that's the x-axis, then these t-distributions look like this. And you should notice that when I draw a t-distribution, it has functionally the same form as a normal distribution. So they look very, very similar to normal distributions. In fact, you can prove rigorously, we will do that in a future video, that as nu goes to infinity, this actually tends to a standard normal distribution, okay? So they look like this, and the important thing is that they're symmetric. So if I let, so if I let t uh, one minus alpha over two, the probability that, of course, with an n minus one degrees of freedom, that t is less than or equal to this, I'm gonna say that that is a percentile, that's gonna be the one minus alpha over two percentile over here, one minus alpha over two. Okay, in other words, one minus alpha over two of the mass, this is t one minus alpha over two, then all this over here is going to be one minus alpha over two. So in other words, this little tiny area that's left over here is going to be just an alpha over two. That area is just going to be an alpha over 2. And since this is a symmetric distribution, if I look at this value over here, t of negative t of 1 minus alpha over 2, then the same thing happens over here. Then I get an alpha over 2 mass over here. So it's a symmetric distribution. So I'm going to use this for my confidence intervals now. Okay, so now we're going to form our test statistic. So how are we going to do that? So now let's form. So therefore, the 100, 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for mu x is therefore, well, it's going to be what? It's going to be x bar over here, and then plus or minus t of 1 minus alpha over 2 of n minus 1 degrees of freedom, right? And then what? Then I'm going to have this s over square root 
of n. And how do we see that? We call this thing over here, we call this t, right? So that, that's our t. Then I know the probability that t, then the probability that that test statistic t is between, is between negative uh, is exactly equal to just one minus alpha, right? Because half goes beyond that and half goes over that way, so that's just one minus alpha. And so that tells me that this interval over here occurs with prob this interval over here occurs with confidence one minus alpha probability. And therefore that is the confidence interval we're after. Thank you very much.